Well, hello YouTube and welcome back to the Holtz Mission channel and this uh, episode of Zerks and Wheels discombobulating the lathe this time. Today we're going to take a uh, kind of a brief run at a, at a tool for uh, making the metal turning lathe into a wood turning lathe. And basically all that entails is making one of these uh, dead centers uh, or driver, uh, driving dead center for the for the chuck and then a uh, holding plate for the live center on the tailstock. Now this little guy here is really important because if you were to uh, chuck up a, a piece of wood and try to turn it on the lathe, yes it will work. Um, in a three jaw course, you know, you, you got a lot of pressure that you're clamping down with. Uh, because the, the metal turning lathe, the, the jaws such are geared so that you exert, you know, a humongous amount of pressure. You know, don't ask me how much, I have no idea, but I just know that it's more than uh, a, wood, a piece of wood can withstand without... Um, if you're trying to put it in there without it slipping, uh, you're going to crush the wood, let's put it that way. And so... Uh, the way you chuck up wood is you put it in between live center, you know, between centers essentially, uh, with the uh, center in the chuck or in the headstock, doing the driving. So in order to do that, you got four little knives, and uh, for the tailstock, you have to have this plate with a small ridge in it, uh, because if you run the live center into the wood without it, uh, what you're going to do is end up splitting the wood. Uh, it just pops right in two because you have to exert so much force in order for it to hold or as soon as you put a tool onto it and start cutting uh, that tool pressure can, is going to push against the workpiece and possibly split it and rip it out of the out of the tailstock. So that's why this little guy here is critical uh, in order to make it work. I've done it before um, let me you know without these little doohickeys but let me tell you it becomes a real adventure real fast and real dangerous. So we're going to start off with this uh, by, uh, I, I just took a, a slug that I had laying around, uh, drilled a hole in it, and um, the first thing we got to do is find center so we can put a bigger hole into it for the center pin. And here's how we're going to do that.
So and then the second step, now and this is another, um, one of those details that just kind of gets lost. You, it's not something you really need, let's put it that way, because you can, you know, exert so much pressure on this dog uh, where you don't really need this. But uh, what I did is I put three flats on <clears throat> on the sides of this thing, or on the on the shaft of this thing, to where um, I can stick it in the chuck and not have to worry about it. You know, really clank. You know, putting a lot of gronk on it. Um, but the main thing is to where you position the thing the same every time. So I'm going to put in a little index mark on here when I put it in the chuck the first time. And that way I put it in the chuck to the same, with the index mark to the same jaw each time. Most of your lathe chucks have numbers on them, so I'll pick a, you know, whatever jaw is closest to me and keep, you know, keep using that as a reference for later on. So. Anyway, that's how we're going to do this. So now all we've got to do is mill the, uh, the teeth into it and here's how we're going to do that.
Now with the teeth, all I did is, uh, is I touched off on three sides and uh, took a little bit over half the diameter in off from the end of the of the mill or the end mill, and I took exactly half the middle uh, or half the middle, <laughs> die, um, half the diameter of the uh, the tool from the top so that the, the blades of the uh, of the dog here are on center um, so that they have a nice center line. Is it necessary? Well, not really. It's just a, it's a question of aesthetics. It'll work either way. It's just something that, you know, little detail work that kind of makes things pop, shall we say. And so uh, then the final step was to make a pin. Sorry, I don't have any of the, the lathe footage because I was on a different lathe in a different part of the, uh, of the outfit and a different part of the plant, so um, couldn't take the camera down there. But uh, the, the final step is just putting in a little grub screw so that the center pin, and the center pin has to stick out. I'll bring this stuff up here and show you up close uh, here in a second um, so that I can put the center pin in with its little uh, tail on the back end. So let me bring it up to the camera here and I'll show you what I mean. Now if you look at this, this line over here and this line over here are exactly on one, one plane and same thing here. You know, you got this line and this line um, on direct on center. And so then that way you know, it's just a question of aesthetics, more or less. It's it's not really necessary. Now, the one thing you want to make sure of is that when, of course, this thing is going to be driving uh, towards you on the lathe, that you have a, like a gusset. So that's the reason this is here. This is the reason also uh, I used a fairly large uh, end mill is to get a fairly decent sized radius on here so that this has some stability. Now these are rather unstable because they are kind of long, but this is uh, tool steel, so it's you know just a question of hardening it now, or maybe not, or just driving it in enough. Uh, the reason being for it is I can resharpen these until they're worn down just essentially nothing, and then I can just you know mill a new set in there. Same thing on the center pin. The center pin has to stick out ever so slightly, about a quarter of an inch, so that uh, when you center your mark or make your center mark on your workpiece, that this goes in first and then you just pop it in, you know, however uh, deep you want it to go in and then you're good to go. Now here's the tailstock plate. We have a ridge here that's, uh, oh, it's about two millimeters. It should be a little higher, but two millimeters is all I could get out of that other goofy lathe down there, so I just colored it good with this. Um, then there's, with the center drill, uh, a 60 degree um, chamfer, if you want to call it that, on the back side, and this slips over the top of the, the live center. So we'll go around here to the uh, lathe here in a second and show you how this mounts. But this is to prevent the work that on the tailstock from slipping off uh, because the pin itself, the center pin won't hold it. Um, you just want the center, uh, the live center to, you know, go in and hold the wood on center until this grabs to keep it from pushing off. So let's go over to the lathe and we'll uh, show you how this this guy mounts on there. This of course is a no-brainer. It just goes in the chuck and I'll show you in a separate video how this this whole setup works. Okay, our lathe, there's a little bit of a construction site here. The clutches went out of it the other day, so we're uh, waiting for parts and uh, I won't be able to show you, demonstrate this, this part, how it works. But anyway, uh, this just slips on here and as you might be able to see in there, no, I'll have to bring the camera around, uh, the center pin, or the center of the point pokes out. I'm going to bring that around here a little bit. So here's this uh, little plate here. It just gets slipped onto the, the tailstock here, and then you can just, uh, you know, poke the, the center into the wood, and then as you advance the quill out to, you know, run pressure up against the chuck, 
this thing holds tight. This is just to prevent the wood from slipping off this thing. If you were to just do it without this, uh, this point will just keep advancing into the wood to the point where it either splits the wood or uh, just, you know, it'll, it'll tear out as soon as you start putting pressure onto it. So that's the reason you want this and this lip on the edge here in order to prevent your work from actually slipping off the chuck. So that's all there is to that. Well, YouTubers, that's a wrap for discombobulating uh, the lathe on this episode of Zerks and Wheels. Unfortunately, our, our lathe uh, is out of commission right now. The clutches went out of it the other day. I did readjust them here two years ago because they were just uh, they were slipping so bad that uh, they had to be readjusted. Unfortunately, uh, with the amount of use this lathe gets, uh, they finally went out. I mean, it's. The lathe is a vintage of 1955, I believe, or maybe 1953. Still the original clutches in it. Um, you know, they're, the thing's 10 years older than me, uh, so it's well over 60 years old. And uh, so, you know, they've seen better days. Uh, the reverse clutch is still okay in it, but still it's, uh, you know, you, I can't run it right now and, and demonstrate how this part is is going to work but the principles there and for any of you wanting to copy this uh, you know it's all you need is a is a, is a mill of some sort and uh, you know there's different ways to index your uh, your part on in a, in a vise if you don't have a dividing head so there's other guys out there that have pretty good uh, instruction on how to do that with the help of a v-block so uh, I'm not sure. I can't recall off the top of my head who all does it. I think it was Mr. Pete and then somebody else. So if you want to check that out, by all means, go ahead. But if you have access to a mill with a with a dividing head, you know, this is how you're going to do it. So uh, if you have any thoughts, comments, critiques, suggestions, or whatever's on your mind, just put it down in the doobly-doo down below. It's always good to get, to get feedback from the subscribers and, well, from the viewers not just the subscribers. So if you're new to the channel, uh, apropos, don't forget to subscribe and uh, give it a thumbs up and all that good jazz. We're trying to, you know, promote the channel a little bit and get it, you know, the, get the ratings up. YouTube and there's some of their uh, newfangled rules is getting a little squirrely. So we're trying to stay within the rules of the, you know, uh, rules of the game and uh, work within it. So. Anyway, uh, thank you. I do thank you for stopping by and uh, hope you get a little something out of this episode and uh, we'll see you guys all again soon.